Good afternoon and welcome to our roundtable, Skilling Latin America's Workforce and Boosting Employment Opportunities, a Call to Action. I personally can think of no more important topic than that topic, the creation of employment and growth. This roundtable is the outcome of previous conversations between the Council of the Americas and Salesforce on the need to draw attention to this important topic and issue a call to action. I want to thank Salesforce for their work and commitment to reskilling workers across the region. Tens of thousands of jobs go unfilled every year in Latin America. As job seekers lack the skills employers are looking for, especially in each sector especially in the tech sector. This labor market mismatch not only hurts those looking to join the workforce, but it is also detrimental to companies seeking to grow their business in the region. Our goal this afternoon is to immerse in an insightful discussion on how the private sector Latin American governments and civil society can collaborate to really reskill the workforce to meet today's labor needs and prepare for the jobs of tomorrow. We know there is a shared commitment to reskill the region's workforce. We want today's conversation to serve as a call for action for ICT companies to work together to make their resources and training certifications available to new talent to join talent wishing to join the digital labor force. I want to particularly thank James Horn, CEO of Balance Internet, Leandro Perez, Vice President of Asia Pacific Marketing at Salesforce for their interview they recorded in preparation for this roundtable. As you know, Balance Internet is a Melbourne-based tech company that created SkillFinder, a free marketplace offering 2,200 digital courses in Australia. These training courses are led by the world's leading technology companies and are available to anyone in Australia who wants to learn a new digital skill. Their work should be, and I hope will be, a real role model for Latin America. Before we begin, I want to give a very special welcome to our two keynote speakers, Heather Conklin, Senior Vice President and General Manager of Trailhead of, of Salesforce. And of course, I want to thank, um, I also want to thank um, Reina Mejia, Executive Vice President of the Inter-American Development Bank and a longtime friend. We both started our careers at Citibank, but hers much later than mine. Um, we are also, I just want to let everyone also know, I want to thank uh, Nicholas Kaplan, Regional Managing Director of Latin America Globin, who will be the moderator of this conversation today. I want to remind you that today's program is on the record. The recording will be available on our website in coming days. After the two keynote speakers, we will have a group conversation. The conversation will be dynamic and we encourage everyone to actively participate. The discussion will end promptly at 430 and we ask that you be very mindful by keeping your questions and comments short. We will mute everyone's audio except for the speakers for the first part. We ask that you please keep your lines on mute to minimize any background noise. If you have comments or questions, please let us know by sending a chat to ASCOA programs. If you want to participate in the dialogue, please raise your virtual hand to be added to the queue and the moderator, um, Nicholas, will call on you. Now, I look forward uh, to the debate and hearing your ideas on the best ways to achieve what we all know is a common goal in Latin America. I'm now going to pass it over to Heather uh, Conklin, Senior Vice President and General Manager of Trailhead Salesforce. Uh, Heather will speak for 10 minutes. Heather, the floor is yours, and I will now mute myself. Thank you so much, Susan. And thank you all for joining us for this conversation today. Um, much like what Susan had shared, 
Um, to me, this is such a really critical conversation. It's something that I'm talking about every day with our customers. Um, and I really look forward to hearing the dialogue that comes out of this group today. Um, so obviously, it's it's no surprise to any of us that the pandemic has completely changed our lives. It can changed how we live and changed how we work. You know, overnight, our kitchens became classrooms, our phones became our storefronts, and Zoom became our offices, or in this case, WebEx became our offices. Um, and that was really for the people who were fortunate enough to be able to take their jobs to their homes. Um, but there were many, many others who lost their jobs in the pandemic when they couldn't be done virtually. And a recent stat has shown that there are more than 30 million people total unemployed now in the Latin American region alone. Um, so we really have a, you know, a, a, a real call to action here, as Susan had said. And in the midst of all of this change that we've been going through as people, companies are also rapidly trying to keep up with the pace of technology, um, taking their businesses completely digital. And it's not new to the pandemic. You know, companies were really thinking about that digital transformation before. Um, but now it's become critical to survival. Companies can't survive anymore if they don't have a digital presence. And with that, you know, there's such amazing progression of technology and it's changing at a pace that we've never, ever seen before. Things like automation and AI and being digital first are completely changing the workforce. And that means that companies are really struggling to keep up with the skills that people need in order to adapt in this new world. And this massive gap is growing between the demand for the skills that, are, that companies need in order to succeed and the number of workers who possess those skills. Um, a recent study by McKinsey said that nearly 90% of executives say that they have a shortage of the needed skills in their workforce today, or they expect to have it in the next few years. So again, um, this, this gap and this uh, shortage of skills is really something on everyone's mind. And I, I certainly feel that myself. Um, I speak to companies around the world wrestling with this issue all of the time. And they're really thinking about it through a number of different lenses. You know, they have people who are already in tech jobs that they need to continually skill and, and really make sure that they're able to retain their jobs and retain um, you know, their ability to succeed in, in this ever-changing environment. They're also, of course, thinking a lot about how do they attract new talent and hire people into the roles that they are going to need in the future. And then they're also looking at how do they retain talent and provide new opportunities for people in their company as well. So I speak to a lot of companies who have a lot of frontline workers who they know how they have great talent and they have a lot of, um, you know, diverse representation in their frontline workers. And they're looking for ways to upskill those people into the tech jobs of the future as well. And of course, we know that individual people around the world are looking for these opportunities and connecting with them is one of the biggest things that we can help everyone do. You know, careers have shifted during the pandemic. Um, people want to get into better jobs to help provide for their families, um, but they really can't rely anymore on traditional education to get there. Um, the time and the cost is, is too great for the, the pace of change that we're seeing today. Um, you know, public college costs alone have jumped over 55% in the last decade. So together, we really believe that we need to find new ways to address this growing problem and really come together, as Susan was saying, across different sectors as we are today in order to find um, ways to address this growing need. And again, with more than 30 million people unemployed in Latin America alone, we know that free online reskilling is going to be critical for social and economic development in the region. At Salesforce, you know, we're really committed to this idea of providing equal and accessible pathways for everyone into the jobs of the future. Equality is one of our core values as a company, and we really live that every day. And I will tell you more about Trailhead in just a moment and how we're actually doing that. Um, but innovation is another core value of ours at Salesforce, and we've developed leading technology that is helping these companies around the world to take their businesses into this digital future. And while this technology is incredible, it does also create an incredible demand for that kind of skilled talent that we were talking about before. Um, and 
we're building something around Salesforce that we are calling the Salesforce ecosystem. Uh, according to IDC, together with Salesforce customers and Salesforce partners, our ecosystem will generate over 4.2 million jobs by 2024, including over 300,000 of those in the Latin American region. So again, there's just this, you know, even for the gaps that we have today, we know that there are more jobs coming um, and more need that we are going to need to uh, skill people up to, to meet that demand. And at Salesforce, we do believe that it is our responsibility as a company, not just to build this technology, but really to help find ways to build that talent in order to make sure that companies have the, the, the skills and people have the skills that they need for this next wave of innovation. And that's really why we created Trailhead. Um, so if you're not familiar with Trailhead, Trailhead is Salesforce's online learning platform. And we empower people from any background to really build their skills that they need in order to get into these digital jobs of the future. People can go to Trailhead and for free, they can learn with over 1000 free badges. And all of this is you know, on demand, available to anyone. Um, and you can also get hands-on access to Salesforce technology, which means that you don't just learn the information, you can actually get the hands-on practice that you need in order to make those you know, lasting skills that you can use in your um, real world experience in the future. And after you're learning or while you're learning, you have the opportunity to earn credentials so people can get certified in Salesforce technology, um, which is critically important to companies who are looking to succeed and, and really build their businesses on Salesforce. And, you know, we see companies and partners around the world really actively seeking people with these credentials that you can get through Trailhead. And additionally, we also have a way to connect all of these learners to each other. And that is something that we really find to be so powerful as a company. Um, this idea of a community of people that are helping each other, that peer-to-peer -peer knowledge sharing and support. And all of this, you know, we've really seen great success with Trailhead. Half of learners on Trailhead have said that it the things that they've learned on Trailhead have helped them to get a promotion or a raise at their company. Uh, and one in three people found that they were able to get a new job with the skills that they learned on Trailhead. So the idea of this really being a proven model that we can extend into new regions is, is certainly there. And you know, we know that to do this at scale, again, it's really vital that the private sector, the public sector and higher education come together. And, and we know no one of us can solve this problem alone. Um, and we've seen really great impact by doing this as a company in, in many different regions around the world. Um, so, you know, Susan mentioned SkillFinder from the Australian government um, that I know we've all learned about as part of the participation in the roundtable today. Um, and SkillFinder was is connected to Trailhead. And so people in Australia who are going to SkillFinder can have access to Trailhead learning right alongside things from other providers and programs. Um, and we've really seen that, that that has helped to develop those kinds of skills in that region. Likewise, in India, we have a program going on there, um, which really demonstrates the partnerships again between all the different sectors where college students in India are now receiving credits um, for the Salesforce developer course that we have. And members of the public in India can receive certificates from the Indian government, um, all by learning with Trailhead. We're also hosting career fairs there to help people find jobs. And we have linked Trailhead to the IT skills platform in India as well, which they call Future Skill Prime. And it's just like the Australia Skill Finder. And in Singapore, we've done the same. Singapore also has a skilling platform called My Skill Future, where they can access Trailhead learning uh, amongst all of their citizens. And there we are also working with colleges you know, to teach Salesforce technology, and we're working with key ministries to train and place mature age professionals into the Salesforce ecosystem. And I really believe that we can do this together in Latin America as well and make a huge impact on the skills gap in the region. There's a clear demand and a desire for this kind of learning within the Latin American region. You know, just from Trailhead, we've seen over 1 million badges have been earned by people in Latin America. And that the pace of the learning there has only increased over the last uh, year. And we've seen over a 30% increase in the activity of learning from Latin America. 
We also have over 6,000 certified Salesforce professionals in Latin America, and that's a 100% increase since the start of the pandemic. So really people are going and they're learning and they're getting credentialed. And while it's really important to, to learn these skills, it's not enough to just learn them. We really need to find ways to help people connect with those job opportunities. You know, we know we can skill them, but if we can't close that last mile um, and help them actually enter the workforce, then our job is not done. And so, you know, we are working on initiatives throughout Latin America. And one that I just want to highlight for you today, just to, you know, get the ideas going as you head into the round table, um, is one in Sao Paulo. Um, there's a government program there called Mia Shan Si. Uh, and in June of 2021, they launched free courses to empower students to become Salesforce administrators and developers with Trailhead. And over 1,300 positions, job positions, were open to students in the community, including women and people over the age of 50. We have almost 1,000 people learning actively in that program today, and some of them have already landed their jobs and are already working on Salesforce implementation projects. So I just want to leave you again with this call to action. You know, our call to action is, is definitely clear. We need to work together across tech companies um, our respective ecosystems, our government entities, civil societies, and academia to do two important things. First is to give exponential visibility to reskilling and job opportunities in the IT sector within Latin America. We need people to understand that they can learn these skills and they can land these jobs. And we need to do the second thing, which is to connect those citizens with those opportunities to help them really enter the workforce. So again, just don't forget about that last mile problem of getting them actually into the jobs. And, you know, this is just going to be critical um, for everyone to have these access to resources and partnerships with workforce development programs to train the communities and build a really thriving workforce. Um, obviously, I've shared a lot about Trailhead today, but it really is a great free resource to help you get started. Um, and I hope that you will leverage it in your plans um, as you go forward. And we are here to help and at Salesforce and within uh, the Trailhead team, um, we really look forward to continuing to work together to build talent in Latin America. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much, Heather. Um, that was fascinating, and I think there is so much opportunity for all of us to work together. I have so many questions, but now um, we have the opportunity to uh, hear from Reina Mejia, Executive Vice President, Inter-American Development Bank. Reina, I look forward to hearing from you as well. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, uh, Susan. Uh, I want to thank the uh, America Society and the Council of the Americas for inviting me to this roundtable. What an honor to speak with you today about what the IDB group is doing. I am excited to share our ideas from the multilateral perspective and build on the vision and insights of what Susan and what Heather had shared and the exciting example in Australia. Thank you for sharing that and thank you for making us part of this. In Latin America and the Caribbean, we're working on skills and taking action through what we call our Vision 2025. Vision 2025 is the IDB's plan to accelerate economic recovery and foster inclusive and sustainable growth in the region. Skills are key to attaining our goal of reactivating the productive sector, fostering social progress, promoting gender equality and diversity, and climate change action. As such, we understand the challenge is to equip workers with cognitive, digital, and socio-emotional skills to thrive in the marketplace. Why is this so important? Heather mentioned some of the key points, but let me share with you some important data representing the situation in our region. Only 60% of teenagers graduate from high school. And out of those, only 19% graduate with basic skills to access good jobs and continue studying. Can you believe that only 19% has real opportunity? 
On average, only 25% of young adults attend a post-secondary educational institution. More than half of adults do not have basic literacy, numeracy, and problem-solving skills. Nearly 40% have no experience with computers or basic digital skills whatsoever. Yes, you heard it right. 40% lack basic digital skills. This is a real challenge that we're facing here. All of this has a significant impact on the labor market. Employers in the region confirm this scenario, and uh, Heather just mentioned it. They do not find sufficient number of workers among high school graduates that are equipped with the needed skills for the job markets. On top of this, COVID-19 has exacerbated this situation, making the poor more vulnerable and broadening the gap between the needs of the market and the skills available to succeed in modern economy. But technology can play a key role in reducing the learning gap and the inequalities of education opportunities. In fact, just in the past year under our Vision 2025, priorities, we are having a direct impact. For example, and I love to share this example, in Peru, we implemented Connect the Ideas. And this was during pandemic, a platform that helped 15,000 students with home learning during the pandemic. Now, the Peruvian government requested us to scale it up to the national level and cover our students in grade four to six. We're talking about 1.4 million students. Yes, 1.4 million students. In order to bridge this skills gap and ensure that the region grows steadily, steadily, we must expand access to high quality learning opportunities. To this end, the IDV is focusing on at least three action areas. First, we are working with partners in the education uh, uh, sector to develop careers of uh, trade, technicians, professionals from value chains. And we need this to be sustainable. For example, the IDV Invest, that is our private arm, provided $21 million loan for the construction of the first Texas Tech University campus in Costa Rica. This is a new educational infrastructure that has a capacity of 1,500 students. It offers four-year university degrees with international recognition in areas where the country has a labor gap, such as electrical and industrial engineering, computer science, business administration, retail, institutional management, um, uh, rep for, uh, management for restaurants and hotels. Second, we're helping workers upskill. That is to say, learn new skills such as improving their digital fluency and reskill, acquiring new skills so that they can perform a different job, a job that is in demand and that it needs to be filled. In Peru, IDB Lab, our innovation arm, partnered last year with Fundación Romero to develop an online education platform for upskill and reskill. Thanks to this project, 5,000 workers aged of 50 to 65 are acquiring relevant skills for the job market. This initiative places a special attention on enhancing digital fluency among female workers and workers in low-skill occupations that are threatened by, automa by automation. Examples like these ones are important because female workers have been so have been hit so hard by the pandemic and are struggling the most to get back to the workforce. This is an excellent way to attract private employers and providers to the skills development ecosystem. The third action we are taking um, to promote economic growth in the region is to uh, fund job readiness and fast track learning initiatives to quickly equip workers with valuable skills. One model that has been proven successful is the one so-called boot camps. 
In the U.S., uh, coding boot camps have grown exponentially in the last few years. You might ask why. Because they have tangible outcomes, and we want tangible outcomes. And are often tied, these are often tied to better paying and in-demand jobs. Demand for boot camps have grown for 2,000 students in, in 2012 to, to 35,000 students in 2020. This industry is booming with over, over 110 providers around the world. IDV Lab, um, our innovation lab, is supporting a ready-to-work boot camps in the region that teaches and places students with our IT-related work experience in high-demand IT jobs. After six months to a year of training, they are placed. One of them is a, a dev.f, uh, is the first Mexican boot camp created in 2014. 80% of the people that have gone through the program found, find a job. And what is most important is that they are achieving an average salary of around $1,100. If you consider the average uh, minimum wage in Mexico, this is four to almost five times the average salary in the country. Can you imagine that what this could mean for people impacted by pandemic? These are some, some of the concrete actions that we are taking. They all seek to bridge the skill gaps and fall within the umbrella of our Vision 2025 agenda. Last year, the IDV group reached historic financing levels of nearly $24 billion for government and firms in the region in response to COVID-19. Together with our partners, we want to continue reinvesting in the Americas so the region is ready to meet this historical challenge. Today, I want to extend an invitation to you we need more technology companies to join us. The private sector must be the engine to sustainable recovery in our region. The Australia example shows the potential when we all work together. The triad of private sector, public sector, and multilateral is now more relevant than ever before. I believe that is in this intercession where the magic happens, and where we can reach goals that working independently will be unattainable. The private sector has unique strength in logistics, markets. The public sector leverages those strengths and attracts investment for the benefit of its citizens. Multilateral banks like IDB are the honest brokers that put together private and public sector. We bring not only resources, but we bring knowledge, experience. We've been in the region for more than 60 years, so we know what has worked. We know what, why something didn't work, and we bring that to the table. I am confident that together we can chart the true path to recovery and prosperity. Together, we can answer many of the pressing questions, such as, how we're going to balance talent with the opportunities in the market. How will we adjust our value chain to absorb this talent? And in addition to today's participants, who do we need to invite to the table? Through our Vision 2025, we at the IDB Group have already started to take action. So let me close by asking, are you ready to join us? Mm. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. Story of my life I didn't under, uh, unmute. I apologize. Um, so much passion um, about something that we all care about, and I think Everyone sitting here is, is, is ready to join um, the IDB to create growth and more jobs and help reskill. I mean, what an amazing uh, opportunity for some of the companies at this table to be working together and with Salesforce because 
we clearly believe that the path forward is by the public and private sector working together. That's the only way, as you point out, Raina, that we can really, really achieve our goals. I do want to point out a couple of things um, before I hand it over, that our first two speakers are women and that they are driving um, senior leaders, driving this very important agenda. So that is also very, very special. Um, with that, I want to welcome Nicholas Kaplan, Regional Managing Director of Latin America and Globa, who uh, will moderate uh, the conversation this afternoon. Nicholas, you got big shoes to fill here <laughs> after our first two speakers, but I know that you can sure. pull this off and have a great I, I time. I sure do. I'll try my best. I'll try my best. I'm, I'm at least confident of doing a, a, a good effort doing so. So so thanks a lot, everybody. Uh, and what an interesting what an interesting subject. Um, it, it's great to see that that we are addressing this uh, and that knowledge and, and progress of our people in our region is is being taken care, right? Um, so so taking this into consideration, I know that that some of you uh, have have uh, questions. I know that Jorge Chela is is that how you pronounce your your surname? I hope so. Uh, from Microsoft has has one question. Do you wanna do you wanna start the section with your question, Jorge? Hi, Nicolas. Good afternoon, everybody. Sorry, I'm not using my video. My internet connection is is not good. So um, first first of all, congratulations for organizing this roundtable. This is something that we really need in our region, in LATAM. Uh, my name is Jorge Sela. I'm philanthropy lead for Americas, which is LATAM, uh, Caribbean, and also Canada. And actually, more, more than a question is something I want to comment that we do not uh, have to forget about people in vulnerability, uh, the skilling. This is, this is the bottom of, of the pyramid of the skilling. And what, I, what we have been seeing in particular in LATAM, is that the most of the effort about the skilling are in the top of the pyramid, which of course are the biggest opportunities. But we need also to take care of the bottom of this pyramid, the people that need basic skills. If we do not increase the bottom of this pyramid, this pyramid will be every day smaller and smaller. This is why we launched 12 months ago, the Global, Initial, Global Skilling Initiative uh, where more than 7 million people started an online training, free online training in Latin, which is really a huge number for our region, which is not used to take online training. But also, but also not only offering online training, but uh, doing agreement with the government and the IDB. Reina asked for joining. We already joined with the IDB in projects like in Jamaica. Uh, but uh, these agreements and uh, working with mentors, we uh, reach more than 600,000 people with a complete 40-hour training that that teach basic skills, foundational skills, how to work with technology. If we don't teach people in vulnerability these basic skills, then it's impossible to move forward. So my first, my first, not only a question but also a comment is that we need to do this at every level to reach people at any any uh, skill level that they have and help them to move forward, to upskill, to reach finally the opportunity. So again, thank you very much. I think this roundtable and this kind of, of um, initiative are fundamental. There is no way that the region recover for the economy if we do not skill people. Thank you. Great, great. So Geraldo from Bloomberg is also willing to, to make a remark and, and a question. Uh, just, just to remind you also that we have opportunity for, for many of you to interact. Let's try to keep it uh, to two, two minutes max, uh, each, each of the question, if possible, of course, right? Okay. Geraldo, do you want to shoot? Yeah, sure. Th th thank you so much, Nicolas, and, and nice to meet you all. Um, Geraldo Coelho from, from a regional manager for Bloomberg for Latin America, based here in Sao Paulo. And I guess that the point that I want to, to share and, and provoke here, uh, perhaps giving my, my background here with, with Bloomberg as a, 
you know, we've been collecting data, analyzing data for the past many years here. And I guess with the, the digital transformation, as we know, basically everything that we touch, that we talk and we see becomes a data point. And more than ever, you know, corporations are, are collecting huge, huge amount of data. And it, it's becoming, then the next challenge is not to collect the data, it's actually to analyze data. Uh, and where we've seen a, 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 a big gap. Uh, um, bueno, somebody. We, we've, can, can I go ahead? Yes, yes, please. One of the biggest, the yeah, with, with regards to skill set, in, in order to pull Lat Latin America employees to become much more competitive and to attract investment here in Nicolás is, is to provide skill sets with regards to ability to, to, to actually transform data in actions uh, uh, to allow, you know, corporations to become more competitive and different themselves. And there's a, it's a huge, there's a huge gap. There, there are many languages available for free, easy to read and to learn, like Python, for example, uh, which is in a very, very, uh, you know, basic level in the region. And that's an area that Bloomer has been focusing the past uh, past year, and where we see a great demand and opportunities for for corporations here. And Geraldo, I was just reflecting on your comment. Do you think that that what's what's the weakest link, or or maybe the 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 side that needs more progress is it data as a raw material or is it analytics as a process that processes that raw material where where where's the weakest thing uh, in in general in globally but it's, also in latam yeah clearly Nicolas is the ability to analyze the data uh, as you know corporations are collecting huge amount of data easily basically everything that we touch becomes a data point but then uh, to analyze is the biggest challenge. But before analyzing, you need to transform the data uh, into information, and you need to be able to program uh, within several available languages. Uh, and and Latin is, is, is way too behind the curve with regards to, well, to, to, to allow employees to actually program and analyze the data. Uh, but to, to your answer, it's not collecting, but analyzing it. Uh, but before analyzing, transforming the data into something uh, actionable. Yeah, yeah, data. One, one, yeah, one thing is inf data, and the other thing is actionable information, data quality, and it's definitely a, a super big challenge. That's what we are seeing also. Um, let, let's switch now to uh, Mr. Juan Carlos Altamirano, Mexico's economy uh, ministry. Uh, Juan Carlos, if, if you may, please go ahead. Uh, we know that you have a, an interesting question for us and a remark also. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Nicolás. Uh, well, uh, beside the question, I want to, to put uh, on the table a few words. Good uh, afternoon, everyone, of course. It's an honor to be here at the American Society Council of the America's Roundtable. And on behalf of the Secretary of Economy of the uh, Government of Mexico, uh, well, we believe that uh, innovation is also uh, modifying that we have done wrong to resume new paths and focus on those people we have left behind. We're sure that if we include and relegate all relegated Mexicans, we'll go forward building a stronger and more resilient country. So, in that sense, uh, um, we uh, uh, um, are uh, we are working on um, a few steps for uh, make this uh, possible. Uh, faced with the first economic and health crisis self-generated by humanity, the digital force allowed allowed us uh, to continue with economic activities, taking a central role and impacting our lives, societies, and economy. Well, like telework, electronic commerce, uh, digital education, and digital health. The information technologies and communication has become the pillar that has allowed us to move into an accelerated stage of digitization, in which the potential of the new technologies and digital tools has been evident. Uh, digital tools are becoming the uh, neighbors of professional, social, and economic activities at the global level. According to experts, several years of digital transformation have been concentrated 
in two or three months of uh, the health emergency. According uh, to the World Economic Forum, it is estimated that 70% of the new value created in the economy over the next decade will be based on digital naval platform business models. According to international studies, it is estimated that by uh, 2022, more than 60% of uh, global GDP will be digitized. Uh, in the last decade, in Mexico has shown a clear progress in terms of digital connectivity and e-commerce. According to INEGI, that uh, there are uh, 84 million internet users in my, my country, representing 72% of the population aged six years and over. It is estimated that the country has 8, uh, 8, 2.2 million cell phone users, which represents 75% of the population aged six years and over. Uh, the importance of the digital skills. The skills become essential for the development of the digital economy. The jobs require increasing interaction with technology as traditional companies and SMEs are going digital. The skill development becomes a, a core requirement for promote the economic, the economic growth. Emerging countries will not be able to participate in the global digital economy unless their workforce, our workforce, uh, has uh, enough and sufficient digital skills. Uh, in that sense, the importance of the digital skills development contributes to the empowerment of people, the use of new digital technologies to find better uh, uh, jobs, promote digital economy, and promote activities with added value. Public policies and strategies in Mexico. In this scenario, Mexico develops and promotes strategies and public policies in the digitization area, based on three strategic pillars, innovation, diversification, and inclusion. We promote social innovation, digital skills, specialized human talent, participation of more women on the, in the digital economy, it's very important point, and the adoption of new technologies. We are working in different initiatives such as uh, the Ministry of Economy and the Ministry of Labor and Social Welfare in alliance with Cisco, Cisco. To promote the development of digital skills for Mexican women through the program Digital Skills for Mexican of the 21st century uh, recently. A study on the gap between academia and industry for adoption of industry 4.0 this study focused on the alignment between skills and competencies of graduates and the needs of industry and the molds and dyes, automotive, textile, and IT sectors. MIPIMES MX. This is a platform where the SMEs can find a library uh, of tools that help them on, the, on key topics for their development, such as uh, training, how to start business, how to sell, how to expand, and how to export. Uh, industrial innovation centers. They are semi-public spaces that provide services demanded by the industry, training and adoption of specialized human capital and technological development. Uh, in, the, in the case of digital skills for Mexican of the 21st century, the objective on the, of the program is to train Mexican women over 16 years old in digital skills. It gives training to Mexican women in different topics, such as basic concepts of IT, like a Connected Woman is the, the name of the, of the program, Internet of Things, the woman at the internet, cybersecurity, safe woman, a specialization of courses aligned to industry certification, such as woman programmer in, the Python, in Python code, woman in networks, automatized woman, and the course uh, will be available until December uh, 3rd of uh, this year. Uh, the study on the gap between academia and industry in, uh, for adoption of industry 4.0 results are a complementary courses, degree seminars, dual training models, professional practices, special sites, activities and materials, and um, competences most valued by companies like problem solving, cognitive flexibility, proactivity, active learning, 
and social skills. Very important point too. Uh, industry, yeah. industry, sorry? Yeah. Oh. Hello, I was just thinking, uh, following Thank your you. comments. Uh, industry 4.0, uh, technology is most related to each sector, like system integration, internet of things, cloud computing, big data, and cybersecurity. And in the PMSMX, this platform, uh, platform has a, a library, like I said, uh, that uh, uh, help is a mess of uh, key topics for data development, such as training and digital skills and, 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 and uh, finan uh, financial culture, financial education, digital commerce, and sales promotion. Uh, so uh, this is uh, 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 some uh, programs that the Mexican government, the Ministry of Economy, were taking for... Uh, um, regenerate the, the economy uh, of, of our country, taking the the the, the force like the pandemia, uh, uh, the, the uh, put us the, the last year in in, in this uh, kind of uh, of a place uh, in this uh, 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 complicated moment. But it, it, it's a it's a very great opportunity to grow up in the digital skills. Mm -hmm and the um, digital economy. Okay, sure. Thank you. Thank you very much, Juan Carlos. And probably it's interesting if you can share the, the link to the document uh, for anyone to that's interested in the in the, in the full description of, of what you were just saying. I think sure. Uh, I'm sure in, in, in <laughs> that's sure of my case. Uh, okay, thank you very, very much. Interesting to see how the government also is, is doing its its side of the of the task. Uh, I I think Fran Fran Okeki's uh, turn uh, is up from Cloud Gaia. Uh, please be our guest. Thank you, Nicolas. Um, I'm Francisco Ken. Thank you. I'm the, I'm the business developer of uh, officer and founder of Cloud Gaia. We are one of the biggest Salesforce partners in Latin America. Um, we have. Uh, more than 170 consultants and developers. And this topic is uh, really also of the essence in, in, in the region now because we have 70 open positions. Uh, it is very hard to, uh, to, to acquire and also to retain talent and, uh, uh, in, a, in the IT field. And uh, I want to share with uh, with the roundtable uh, some of the of the um, things that we are doing to address this uh, challenge. Um, uh, first, uh, it's a great opportunity, uh, as it was said, uh, to uh, train uh, people that are in vulnerable areas, um, and uh, uh, in that sense, we are working with uh, ONGs. Um, setting up uh, boot camps, uh, which are uh, very uh, heavy. That's why they need to, to, you know, our sponsorship because they're for, say, four months, uh, ten hours a day, five days a week. So it's a, it's a very intensive uh, train, uh, technology training. But in those four months, you have uh, um, people that are trained and, and can get a job. Uh, uh, very well paid uh, and and can uh, in in areas uh, in persons that, that didn't even think about that was a uh, was feasible. Uh, we are doing this in groups of twenty people in different cities in different parts of Latin America, uh, and we have been doing this with uh, with great success. So it's something that uh, I wanted to share with the group. Great, great. Yes, thank you. Good for for everybody to, to take advantage of, of the economy of knowledge, right? Uh, to be able to deploy that and to accelerate it. So, cheers indeed. on that. Yeah, indeed. Uh, James Horn, do you want to go? Yes, good morning, Nicholas. How are you? I'm fine. I'm fine. How are you? Good. It's very early here in Australia this morning. I just yes. wanted to, <laughs> I guess so. to, to add a couple of comments around both the beginners thanks for, or the, the, thanks for the, connecting um, at this time of, of, of the morning and congrats on the initiative by the way no worries no i'm uh, very very interesting to hear what everyone's got to say but just on two things on data and on beginners 
we've noticed in Skill Finder, we, we've got an, um, a very deep diving analytics program sitting behind Skill Finder that we've installed and we're watching what's, what, which, what citizens are doing. And one of the really interesting statistics that we've found is we can actually pinpoint where the greatest demand for the skills is geographically. So we're actually starting to understand which areas and towns in Australia are, are seeking more skills. And the other thing we're doing is we've actually noticed that 70% of the people using Skill Finder are beginners. They're starting their digital journey or they're looking for you know very entry level digital skills. And, and that just uh, reinforces what was said earlier. So look forward to uh, joining you all this afternoon. And if you've, any of you have got any questions, please reach out to me because uh, because uh, I'm, I'm Skill Finder and what we've done here in Australia is uh, very close to my heart. Yeah, yeah, I was just going to say that same thing, James, and thanks for offering it. Uh, I, I, I encourage everyone to to contact you and, and to see how we can synergize or, or, or reuse uh, all of what you have already done so successfully uh, to deploy it here in Latin America and to see how we have to customize it because, of course, it's a different reality, but... but uh, I'm sure that's plenty, plenty to lever on, on and over your your skill set and your your lessons learned. So thanks and thanks again for connecting at such a a, a ridiculous time in the morning. Um, I, ha I hope you have a great great rest of the day. Um, Claudette Muñoz, do you want to go ahead and, and and share your thoughts with us and maybe a, a question also? Sure, of course, and um, thank you for uh, the opportunity uh, to elevate the message. Uh, I am Claudette Muñoz, and I am representing LEGO Education from the LEGO Group. Um, I know that uh, many people are not very aware uh, of the fact that the LEGO Group has this division uh, focused in education. And it is actually a very important one because we are focused in STEAM education. STEAM being science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. So I would like to go to the origins of these skills and workforce. And the origins, of course, are children. And um, I would like everyone to understand and to question yourself what are we doing with children and education in terms of preparing them to face the future? As uh, we have been discussing, it has been predicted that millions will, will need to be reskilled to cope with the change, while governments will need to provide stronger safety nets for displaced workers, and this is important. It's not only the work itself that will be impacted by automation, for example. No, automation uh, also will prompt big changes in the types of roles for which employers are hiring. And complexity will increase and the higher skills will be demanded, even for entry-level tasks. And uh, what we are seeing is the emergence of entirely new types of jobs that require entirely new skills. And uh, the important question here would be, what does all this mean for students and education systems around the world? Perhaps most significantly, it means that the majority of children who are entering primary school today will be working in jobs that do not exist yet. Therefore, we need to equip children with skills and mindsets that allow them to step into this uncertainty and create opportunities for themselves and their communities. This increasingly interconnected and dynamic reality also means that children will need to continuously update their skills as they grow so a capacity and preferably an enthusiasm for lifelong learning will be important. Realizing that these goals will require us to rethink and evolve our education systems, our on-the-job training programs, and our evaluation processes so that the children of tomorrow can face the future with confidence. These are all areas that we are thinking about the Lego education. We believe that basic education is fundamental to prepare students to succeed 
and read prepared for an uncertain future. Preparing and developing students in Latin America for the future workforce is a top priority, not only for educators, but also the organizations where students may one day become employees and leaders. And while educators have gone above and beyond to ensure learning continues during this full year, it is clear that we must rethink how students learn to re-engage and excite them towards the learning journey. We can no longer assume that traditional classroom education is the best education. Nowadays, we know and we have witnessed that knowledge is not enough. Traditional learning is not adequately preparing students for the future, which demands both STEAM skills and 21st century skills. STEAM standing for, I repeat, science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. So would you imagine a biology classroom with educational robotics, for example? Would you imagine a history class with educational robotics? Existing educational challenges like anxiety, mental health, digital inequity, and lack of confidence in school-based learning have been amplified in 2020 due to the global pandemic. So, from Lego Education, we strongly believe that hands-on STEAM learning and project-based learning prepares students for the future, while driving engagement, student confidence, and growth mindset. Important to mention that there is a dichotomic tension between playing and learning, and yet learning to play is children-centered, and it allows a child to take control over the learning experience. Now, today we need uh, cultivating a lifelong love of learning, not only with children, but also with adults. We adults need this lifelong love of learning because it is even more accelerated based on the rapid pace of development and increasingly dynamic society and the impact of technology in our work and life. And close, I would like to say that it is encouraging to see organizations recognizing the importance of STEAM and the 21st century skills, ranging from resilience to coding, empathy, and critical thinking. So we must continue to provide hands-on learning opportunities and strengthen these skills in the classrooms today. Yeah, great, great remarks, Claudette. Super, super interesting the the perspective, and 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 the whole the whole STEM. Uh, as we were mentioning before, the, the, the economy of knowledge and also how how it's useful, I'd say for for inclusion in general, right? For 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 social justice and uh, and progress, uh, and uh, I think it's very useful to close plenty plenty of gaps, um, and also very interesting. And I was wondering if we could maybe it's interesting if we could focus on not only on training, but also on how that training generates value on the people that are trained. And, and especially, I was wondering if, if it would be interesting for you all to focus on how that people can then be able to capture that value for themselves, right? Which is maybe in the end, one of the main perspectives and objectives that that people have. So, so maybe in that sense, Hillary, uh, you are next, and if you could also give us your full name and your affiliation, as in your profile it's not described, it's also interesting for us to know who we are also speaking to. Absolutely. But yeah, thank you so much for that. All well, yours. I'm I'm uh, Hillary Foster. I am uh, from Amazon Web Services. I lead education programs for Latin America, Canada, and the Caribbean. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be with you. I'm, a, uh, I'm an alum of the IDB and always uh, filled with uh, pride at learning uh, all of the, the activities that, that they're conducting. And, and we're also delighted that we've been able to work with the IDB on a number of different initiatives, um, particularly around developing tech talent. Um, you know, Nicholas, your, your question around how participants or learners can get value for themselves is of critical importance. And so I would sort of, you know, mention one, um, the, the, the question of, uh, learners getting to the end of a, a learning process and having some internationally recognized 
credential or set of skills. Um, it's something that we know is, is really important in our um, programs, uh, AWS Educate, AWS Academy, Restart, uh, TechU, always um, sort of prepare the students and encourage them to get to that point of certification. Um, we are just, uh, as of very recently, opening up uh, our AWS Academy program so that professors are able to just begin teaching because we understand in our own company for our own tech needs, we are having a, a challenge of finding the people with the right profile. But we also understand that our uh, customers and our partners have this major skill gap. Um, you know, we work in the public sector, so I'm also always thinking about um, the, the, the needs of governments themselves, of the educational institutions, the ministerios de educación, the universities that, that also need to be uh, transforming their digital presence and their ab ability to use technology to better serve their students and their citizens. So, you know, one thing is is making sure that, um, you know, in, in the new world of skilling, we provide learners with, you know, a, a, maybe a, a different set. It may not always be about the uh, university degree. And in fact, we want to be thinking about um, partnering with our university customers that we are providing curriculum um, for them to, to teach on to their students, but thinking about how micro credentials or stackable credentials can help make that case to potential employers. Um, uh, we have committed to training 29 million people worldwide in cloud computing by 2025. And it's a very lofty goal. And, you know, related to that, we think about, you know, as um, as Jorge mentioned, the, the question of the, the, the talent pipeline, how do we get to those numbers? Um, it's related to making sure that our presence in K-12 institutions is strong and we're able to support their online learning uh, platforms. And, you know, we've seen in the pandemic, you know, on the one hand, horrible human tragedy. And on the other hand, many institutions have been able to catapult themselves into the future with digital transformation to be able to better reach um, students uh, in, in a virtual setting. Um, we also see um, the strengthening of university programs to be incorporating the skills that are truly needed by the by, by industry, um, and and some of that looks like um, you know providing curriculum, and some of that also looks like trying to open up the university uh, area to non-traditional learners. And then finally, we've had really um, great success with uh, working directly with governments on workforce development initiatives that are open to uh, you know citizen populations to sort of inspire them to be thinking about what's possible if you code if you um, you know take the time to understand artificial intelligence and build up that kind of skill set data analytics cybersecurity those sort of big uh, areas where there are skill gaps um, but you know one question that I would sort of offer to the group uh, is related to how we can help industry also think differently about um, when they have an open position, what the requirements look like. So that, you know, sometimes we see blockers of, you know, people maybe that are doing some upskilling later, uh, you know, later in life, don't have a traditional career pathway to be able to say, you know, this this job requires X, Y, Z, but it might not necessarily look like this university degree. Um, so I'd love to hear yeah. sort of best practices around folks who've been able to help along the conversation of, you know, in the new world of digital transformation and, and, and yes. change. We also have to build in flexibility about what we're talking about um, uh, yeah. to be able to help people in, in transitions. Great, great. Great point, Hillary. And uh, before you said that, I, I was going to to question, to 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 make a question to you regarding AWS uh, and how do you, did you um, hire or, or 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 forward candidates from your training courses to uh, partners and and clients of yours? But but I think that the last point and the question that 
that you did is is great and i think the underlying concept is that we are always demanding for candidates and talent and people to to change and to adapt to our uh, to our reality and i think that we as employers probably have a, a larger gap than they as talent do, right? So so I think that's a great point and super interesting for you to address us all in that sense. Uh, but, but do you have any comments on, on the question I just did to you? Yeah, absolutely. So um, part of our AWS Educate platform, which is a free online learning platform that has 12 pathways from Cloud Computing 101 through uh, data architect through uh, application developer. Um, on that platform, there's a job board. And the idea is that uh, we reach out to our partners and customers, people who are looking for that cloud talent. And right there in the platform, the student can go in and see what uh, opportunities are available and apply right through that site. So that's been um, a, an effective tool. We also um, have a program called Abilidades Tech, which um, is an intensive training uh, course online. We um, uh, just run a uh, woman edition in Latin America to be focusing on um, increasing our, um, you know, the, the, make sure that the face of our company is accurate um, and representative of our societies. And in that program, we sort of start uh, from 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 the from the very beginning of making sure that there are job opportunities at the end. So, um, in a sort of culmination event a couple of weeks ago, uh, we were able to start start announcing, you know, here are the, the placements that the sort of excellent students who had done really well and were able to go through an interview, here are the, the jobs that they're going into immediately. So kind of thinking okay. from, the, from the result that we want to get to backwards into how do we make sure that that presence is, um, you know, accounted for throughout all of our programmatic mm -hmm. thinking. Great, great, Hillary. Super, super. Um, thank you so much. Anna, are you there? Uh, could you also give us your name and, and affiliation too, as we don't have that information yet? So Absolutely. Hi, Nicolas. I thank tried you very to much. Put Hi. It, I tried to put it in. I, I didn't no know. problem. It's, it's even better for you to tell us. Exactly. So I get a, a couple seconds more. My name is Anna Blanco. I work for Philip Morris International. And thank you very much for inviting me today here. It has been a fascinating discussion so far. And I have two reactions that I would like to share with the group based on our experience and the presence of my company in Latin America. Um, one is related to the skills deficit as it was described by Reina Mejia at the beginning. And it's something that we couldn't agree more with um, the number she presented is something that we see on the ground. We experience it. Um, the digital divide and the digital illiteracy is something we see firsthand. What I would like to, to add and share from our observations is that this digital divide and the illiteracy is very much pronounced in the female population. Um, both when we see that our rural, in our, our farmers' communities, as well as in the cities, we see women um, lacking behind much more in the skills deficit than men. And it's something that our company uh, pays special attention to. And I wanted to share that, that gender component of the, of the skills deficit. Um, a second point I wanted to share is the, my company, PMI, um, seeing the, the lack of skills has throughout the years, pairing and making partnerships with several organizations on the ground, offering training courses, things on, on agriculture, or if it's in the cities on digital skills, etc. However, the results, and this is more for the farmers community um, that we observe, we were not seeing the results in the scale that we wanted to. And this has motivated us in the last year and a half, more or less, to look beyond that into the root causes for the skills deficit. Because we were noticing when we were offering and partnering with our partners, et cetera, go offer the courses, there's not a lack of skill. There's a lot of talent uh, among the communities, and there's a lot of appetite in the communities to be able to, to take the courses and get 
the the skills they need. However, they deal with certain um, situations that just do not allow them to um, to participate. In the rural areas, it's in Latin America is poverty. So they deal, they have to feed their family before they can allocate time to skills. Although it's a, a circle, if they could be educated, it would be easier to feed their family, but they have to, certain communities have to deal first with um, certain situations. In urban circumstances, in urban um, context, we were looking at um, household uh, requirements and burdens that we as a company needed to commit to start addressing, enhance the partnerships with our partners on the ground to be mindful and tackle also the root causes to include that as part in the uh, cycle of training and uh, the capacity building that we were offering. And that has been working and to Reina and to Hillary, we're ready to, to continue to partner with organizations and try to make our efforts more much more impactful. Thank you. Um, I, I think Mr. Ali Anderlich, Alejandro, you, you want to remark something, right? You, you raised your hand. Yes, Nicolas, thank you. And from Salesforce, all, from Salesforce. Yes, uh, Alejandro Lick, I lead government affairs for Salesforce in Latin America. Uh, good Wednesday to everyone. First of all, congratulations, Susan and the Council of America's team for bringing us together. I can't agree more with everything that uh, I heard today. But, you know, uh, I still believe that we've been uh, complaining for years now about the lack of uh, technology resources in our respective ecosystems. And we keep uh, talking about future of work. And to the extent we keep talking about future of work, we will not be uh, uh, assessing the urgency that this situation actually has and the great opportunity that uh, uh, the fourth industrial revolution is bringing to the workforce worldwide. Uh, I have heard from um, my colleague uh, Heather mention that there will be over 300,000 uh, new jobs uh, through the Salesforce ecosystems in the next couple of years. And if we bring that together with the thousands of resources that the rest of our respective ecosystems will require in the coming years, I can't really understand why we are not taking uh, urgent action together. And, you know, building on the great example that we've heard about what, the, uh, what Australia has been doing, uh, I believe it would be uh, really inspirational if we can sit around the same table, uh, the government, uh, the private sector, the, the ICT ecosystem, uh, enhanced by the rest of the companies, the rest of the organizations, I would say, regionally, who would also be requiring these tech resources, bringing them together with uh, the online resources that all of us companies have, and then help citizens uh, uh, gain that reskilling, certification, and further incorporation into the workforce. We need to, I believe, build the, the entire virtual circle where we would uh, train or retrain citizens of all realities and ages in tech skills and give them the opportunity once certified to become a party of our respective ecosystems. I believe we have a golden opportunity there and maybe we can start piloting in one of the countries in LATAM. We can pick one and see if uh, uh, a feature like the one that uh, Australia or some other government who also tackled this situation has built and implemented as a pilot and then build from there. I mean, if we don't take uh, action together now, we will keep talking about future of work and we won't be successful in giving a solution to uh, the challenges that the future of work would have. Thank you. Point out point out how we need to act and not only speak, right? I, I always love your angle on that. Uh, 
And in that sense, I was thinking that maybe maybe there are a couple of of takeaways that that, that is good to to detect and to point out as a as a conclusion of of the session which we are starting to reach. And I think that that one thing, and maybe it's it's kind of obvious, but it's worth mentioning is bringing things and learnings and tools and accelerators from other geographies, right? Uh, which is of course not automatic, but, but it's always uh, positive for for the economy of of the effort itself. Uh, the other thing is that that of course workforce must change because the the, the demand of of work, the jobs to be done are are changing due to that the world is changing and also the technology is uh, more available and, and more powerful each day and, and and the velocity of change is also also increasing and I think that the the last one is that um, there's there's a need for not only to to develop value in in the people that we're helping to to be skilled but also we are uh, probably understating or, or or we need to to take to that same level of of relevance the help that we have to give that people in capturing the value that they develop on themselves and how to to then take that to the market and 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 use it to 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 develop uh, positions that take advantage and, uh, and capture value, as I said, of of that. And I think that the, the last one, uh, the last item, uh, and probably the, the, the most important one, um, specifically in Latin America, is how technology is being able to, to close uh, many, many, many types of of gaps that that we do have in in our continent right i think that's that's really great and that uh, makes us uh, all really proud to be connected uh, with with the technology sector right or, or 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 as users as clients as vendors as as partners as whatever but but it's lovely to see how technology is being able to mobilize uh, society in general um so I don't know if if uh, anyone wants to 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 say something else or or um, um, yeah, any of the, the keynote speakers want to add something now that we have listened to to the questions. Reina, do you want to add something now that we've heard all of the questions? Um, no, uh, thank you. I think it has been um, it has been mentioned and it's very clear. And um, I am glad that we do have partners to join us in this uh, in this endeavor. So uh, we're here to support the region. Uh, our doors are open, and um, we can take it from here. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Super interesting, as as we said before. Okay, we are also also in time so in willing to to be respectful of everybody's time you know susan thank I you think very we're much hand it back to randy randy do you have some closing remarks closing remarks are tremendous opportunity to train the workforce of today for latin america not only the young people, but women and the older people. There are lots of jobs available. Training is there. The question is marrying the two. And as Alejandro said, urgent action. People are doing lots of different things. And the question is also to sing the successes and make sure that these young people and women and older people actually find jobs because as Rain, I think, said in the beginning, the most important thing is to give them the opportunity and the confidence, but also have them make sure they can work in a modern, if you will, work environment, which is so, so very important. Urgent action, call to action. We thank everybody for participating today. 
Heather and Reina and everybody who has made comments. And Nicolás, you were fabulous. Thank you very much. Juan Carlos, Thank welcome you. to your new job. And we look forward to collaborating a lot with the Secretaría de Economía. Cuenta con nosotros. Let's make this all happen, everybody. We have a challenge. Thank you again.